Thank you, and I recognize the gentleman from uh, Louisiana, Mr. Higgins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Casarati, Dr. Sherman, thank you for being here today. Um, there's been an ongoing discussion in my office for quite some time. Regarding, of course, I support the in enforcement of the law and protection of our, our travelers. And we all travel a lot. You know, it it's, uh, has always been, to me as an American, comforting to know, even as a cop. You know, when I was a, a full-time cop, and sometimes I would, would, would travel on a pretty regular basis to participate in the training somewhere or to interact in some manner with other law enforcement. So even being a cop on an airplane, it was, it was always reassuring to think, you know, maybe there's an air marshal on a plane trying to identify the guy. You know, maybe it's that guy, maybe it's that guy. Like just the way it's supposed to work. So being a supporter and a cop myself, it was that much more troubling as a constitutionalist when it began to be brought to my attention that, that maybe the Air Marshal Service has been co-opted by, by some darker force within the federal government that would oppress the freedoms and rights, including the very, very basic freedom to travel the land that Americans enjoy. So I paid very close attention to the initial whistleblowers that came forward and spoke to me in my office and we performed our due diligence. We discovered a letter that I had, had not known of prior that was authored by the, at that time, the Democrat chairman of this committee and the ranking member of this committee just after January 6th, essentially instructing TSA to find ways to interact with and obstruct the travel of uh, conservatives that had come to the, to the capital region in the time frame before January 6th and after January 6th. Well, that, that bothered the hell out of me that such a thing could happen. And so we started looking into it. And some disturbing things have come to light, and some things that we thought perhaps were disturbing, they were settled. So where we are right now, as a body, as a, as a committee, and we're responsible to perform for the American people and to support our oath to defend and support the, the Constitution of these United States, are far more important than anything, you know, Republican or Democrat. But Americans need to hear from you that the air marshal services are not being used to follow around conservative Americans that have been tagged as some a high-risk individual. You'd support, if an American supports a particular candidate for, for president, is that does that put an American potentially in a high-risk category that, would, that would, would be followed by the air marshals? Mr. Casaretti? Congressman, I don't believe that that specific thing uh, would put you in the category, but I believe there is the discretion and the leeway for TSA to develop a rule set that has a high likelihood of catching any type of person it wants to. So uh, everything's rules-based. So because there is no uh, tough oversight of the rules they're using, they can make any rule they want to. And uh, yeah, it could exactly. be- Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the freedom to travel the land, I mean, it's a, it's a foundational principle. I mean, you're not actually living in a free land if you're not free to travel the land. And if we're, being, if, if we're being watched and tracked and followed and spied upon by, by agents that we the people, you know, provide to protect the citizenry allegedly from 
from some legitimate threat to air travel. It's disturbing and troubling. I have several questions that I knew would never get to. We prepared in writing um, for you, Mr. Kazarani, and you, Dr. Sherman. Uh, just three or four questions each. We're going to provide those in writing. I hope to have a timely answer uh, on those questions. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the subcommittee convening on this important topic, and I yield. Thank you to the gentleman from uh, Louisiana. Uh, we're going to go through.